Meet Me on the Beach. A Love on Palmer Island Romance. Written by Suzanne Ash. Chapter 1. You Look Pale. Everything okay? Miss Doris, the kind neighbor from across the street, asked. I saw you sitting out on the porch and came to see if you'd like to join me for lunch. The older woman walked up on the porch and sat down next to Hope. They had a deal on homegrown tomatoes at the farmer's market this morning. I couldn't resist making a tomato pie, but it's really too much for one person. Hope folded the letter in half and put it in her lap. That's very kind of you, but I need to get back to grading papers. She rose. Would you like a glass of tea? Miss Doris always had a kind word for her. Though Hope didn't feel like company after reading the letter, she couldn't let her neighbor leave without showing her at least a little hospitality. Tea would be nice, thank you, Miss Doris said. Hope walked into the kitchen and tucked the letter into her bill drawer. She pulled two glasses from one of the old oak cabinets and grabbed the metal ice cube tray from her 1950s-era fridge. She didn't know how it continued to work, but she was grateful. She loved the look of the old-fashioned appliance, even if it sucked more power than newer models. Besides, her modest high school English teacher salary didn't allow her to replace things that weren't broken. Hope filled each glass with ice and grabbed the sweet tea from the fridge. Moisture pooled on the outside of the glasses by the time she'd stepped back onto the front porch. She loved her little house. It sat one row back from the ocean, and she could see a little sliver of blue water between the two houses across from her. There was enough of a gap to let a good breeze through that made even these hot, early September days more bearable. Won't be long before it starts to cool down, Miss Doris said. They sat, drinking their tea, and looking out across the road in front of them. Are you sure about the pie? It's pretty good, and I could use the company. I'm not sure I'd be very good company today, Hope said, looking down at her bare feet. Bad news? Miss Doris put a cool hand on top of hers. Not exactly. More confusing. Hope went through the contents of the letter that had arrived this morning again in her head. She knew each line by heart. Uh huh. Miss Doris seemed to study a ladybug crawling along the porch railing. Hope bit back a sad laugh. It was obvious the older woman wanted to say more. She was a bit of a busybody, and Hope had a feeling it was all she could do to keep from asking about the letter. Michael wrote me a letter. He's coming back home. He's asking me to meet him on the beach next week. That settles it. You're coming with me to have lunch. We need to talk about this. Miss Doris rose and walked into Hope's kitchen, putting her glass in the sink. Hope followed her and knew there was no sense arguing. Besides, she could use some friendly advice. Hope stood in front of her dining room window, peeking through the halfway closed shades. She'd gotten home from school half an hour before she was supposed to meet Michael and hoped to catch a glimpse of one of the highest ranking tight ends in the NFL. Maybe that would help her make up her mind about walking out to the beach to meet him. It had been five years. Her breath caught when she saw a cherry red 1991 Ford Bronco pull up in front of Miss Doris's house. It couldn't be? Could it? A brown haired man in a black t shirt that stretched across his wide shoulders stepped out. It was Michael. She'd recognize him anywhere. Miss Doris's words from a few days ran back through her head. You'll regret it for the rest of your life if you don't hear what he has to say, her friend had said over lunch. Hope opened the front door and stepped out onto the porch. Michael was already jogging down the small beach access path between Miss Doris and her neighbor. She followed quickly, not bothering to lock her front door. She'd only be a minute. After all, she and Michael Erickson had been history for five years and there was nothing that would change that. No matter how fast her heart beat when she'd caught sight of the same Bronco he'd driven in high school or how good his but looked in those tight jeans. While she'd been busy grading papers on Hamlet, he was catching footballs on national TV. They'd been doomed since the day he was drafted. Chapter 2 You came, Michael said, when she walked onto the beach. I wasn't sure you would. 
he'd hoped. One of the benefits of sending her an old-fashioned letter was there was no way for Hope to decline his invitation to meet. Neither was I. She was a little out of breath, like she'd run there. He wondered where she lived. Still on the island from the look of her bare feet and the sun-kissed tan he'd loved since they'd met in junior high. I'm glad you did. He could have had any girl he wanted over the past five years. As a first-round draft pick, he'd had his fair share of women throw themselves at him. The problem was there was only one he cared about. Hope, the girl he hadn't been able to get out of his mind, no matter where he'd traveled with his team. Why did you want to meet here? Hope asked. She cleared her throat and looked out over the ocean. She was almost close enough for him to touch her. There were subtle changes in her face and in the way she held herself. She seemed more confident, more sure of herself. He liked it. The hair was the same and she still had the most dazzling smile. He'd only seen it for a second when she'd first walked on the beach. Now she looked, guarded. Michael shook his head. This was too important to lose focus. This was not the time to be lost in memories. Not if he wanted to win her back now that everything had changed. This place is special. It holds my best and worst memories. He stopped until she turned and looked at him. I thought it would be a good place for a new start. Michael, she looked at him with those pretty blue eyes. They didn't sparkle with excitement as he'd hoped. Instead, she looked, sad. As if noticing his look, she grabbed her sunglasses off her head and put them on. I get it. It's been five years. Michael shrugged. When I heard you weren't married and not seeing anyone, I'd hoped. It's a long time. Hope turned back to the ocean. Strands of her long blonde hair blew away from her face. Michael couldn't keep his eyes off her profile. He wanted her back. He got why she'd refused his proposal five years ago. The media attention those first few years had been intense. He'd traveled with his team all across the United States. It wasn't the life she'd wanted and he'd respected that. But now, everything was different. Why now, she asked. Why did you want to meet after all this time? He barely heard her over the sound of the waves crashing onto the shore and the seagulls squawking above them. I stopped playing. She looked surprised. He could tell, even with those big sunglasses. A vain part of him had hoped she'd followed his career from a distance. He took a breath and kept going, I retired at the end of last season. My shoulder has been giving me trouble, and I didn't want to end up like one of those old players who can barely move. He shrugged. It was time to move on. When I saw the opening for a high school football coach position, I decided to come back. You retired? Hope looked stunned. And came back? Michael was surprised she hadn't already known. It had been all over the sports news for weeks. I missed this place. He looked up and down the beach at the row of older beach houses stretching as far as the eye could see. If you'd have told me that five years ago, I would have laughed. But it's true. This is home. Because it was where she was. He didn't think Hope was ready to hear that part yet. I teach English at the high school, she said. I know. My mom talks to Miss Doris. She's kept me in the loop. He dropped his shoulders. That's not going to be a problem, is it? Us working at the same school? It's why I wanted to talk to you. I thought it would be awkward if we ran into each other in the hall or something. He put his hands in his pockets. Oh. Hope dug a hair elastic out of her shorts pocket and pulled her blonde locks into a high ponytail. Michael couldn't keep his lips from twitching up. She looked just like she had as captain of the cheerleading squad. I guess that would have been strange. Her laugh sounded forced. It wasn't the same carefree giggle he'd loved back when they were together. I was wondering why you wrote that letter. It's good that you're home. So, coaching? That's a surprise. I know. Not where I thought I'd end up, but it feels right. What do they have you teaching? 
Hope asked, turning to look at him. Geography. No way. This time her smile seemed genuine. You wouldn't have passed that final if we hadn't stayed up all night studying. He grinned. I guess Principal Fowler has more faith in me than you. She took a step toward him and punched him in the shoulder. Right. He just wants the team to take state this year. Michael shrugged. He may have mentioned something about that. So, we're good? Maybe we could grab a coffee or something. Catch up. Yes. We're good. It's nice to see you. You look, happy. He didn't miss that she chose to ignore his invitation. He'd have to have patience with Hope. Hope stood on a chair, attempting to hang a poster while talking to herself under her breath when Michael walked past her classroom. Need a hand, he asked, stepping inside. He grabbed one corner of the large printout with famous literary quotes and pictures of their respective authors on it. Michael held it in place while she added a few thumbtacks to her corner, then added a few on his side. Thanks. Hope jumped down from the chair and backed up. Does that look straight to you? He strolled beside her and nodded. Yep. Getting your classroom ready? Looks good in here. He spun around the room she'd made her own. It was undoubtedly Hope Patton's space. Thanks. How about you? Did Principal Fowler assign you a room yet? He did. I just came from his office, and it's across the hall from yours. Miss Patton, I knew you'd be here. They both turned when Principal Fowler walked into the classroom. I was hoping you would take Mr. Erickson here under your wing. This will be his first year teaching. Maybe you could give him a few pointers, help him set up his room. He looked around and nodded appreciatively. Of course. I'd be happy to. Hope smiled at their boss. Thankfully, he was new to the school and the district. He hadn't been there when Hope and Michael had gone to school. From the look on his face, the principal had no idea how well they knew each other nor that they'd been the couple on campus all through high school and college. Everyone had expected them to marry. Including him. Then, he popped the question and she'd shot him down. Wonderful. I'm sure Mr. Erickson would be happy to help you move those bookshelves in return. Principal Fowler pointed toward a set of solid oak shelves that were shoved into one corner of the room. Maintenance could do it, but they are backed up as it is. He turned to Michael. You don't mind, do you? I assume your shoulder won't be an issue. Not a problem. I'd be happy to. Michael wished people would stop asking him about his shoulder. Yes, it had ended his career as a pro football player, but it hadn't turned him into an invalid. He was perfectly capable of moving a couple of empty bookshelves. Was that your stomach? Hope asked. She stood right next to him, pulling books out of a box, arranging them on one of the shelves. Michael grimaced. I haven't had lunch, he said with a shrug. He glanced down at his watch, surprised to see how late it was. No wonder he was starving. I'm almost done here, you can head out. Hope bent back down to grab another handful of books from the box. Her class would be reading a lot of Shakespeare this year from the looks of it. I'll stay and help you get the rest of these put up. She smiled at him and kept working away. Shouldn't be long, she said. Wanna grab some food after, he asked, holding his breath. It's been a while since I've had one of Mary's cheeseburgers. Sure, why not? I'm too tired to cook after this anyway. She stood and brushed a bit of dust off her shirt. I always forget how much work it is to get my room set up. Dinner at Mary's hit the spot. Hope laughed when he ordered the double cheeseburger with bacon and a side of fries. No chocolate milk shake, she teased. Michael patted his flat stomach. Got to watch my girlish figure. The look on her face said there was nothing girlish about the way he looked. He couldn't help puffing his chest out a bit in response, which earned him one of her eye rolls. Yeah, right. You've always been able to eat anything and not gain an ounce of body fat. 
me on the other hand. She ran her hands subconsciously along her thigh. Michael couldn't help but follow her motion with his eyes. There was nothing wrong with her legs or her hips. Sure, she wasn't supermodel thin, never had been, but he liked that about her. She was soft and round in just the right places. Someone he could hold on to. It made him crave her touch, her hugs, and reminded him of the nights they'd spent laying on a blanket at the beach, staring at the stars. This was fun, Hope said as he walked her back to her car. Just like old times. She smiled one of her dazzling smiles. It did something to him. Without thinking, he leaned down and tucked a strand of her hair behind her ear. Staring at her cherry red lips, he lowered his face to kiss her. He could almost taste them and briefly wondered if she still used that watermelon-flavored chapstick of hers. Hope put a hand on his chest. That's not what I meant, she said before turning around and getting into her car. Chapter 3 I'm sorry, Miss Patton. I didn't finish the sonnet last night, Ethan Baxter, one of Palmer High's linebackers, told her Wednesday morning before class. He held a piece of paper out to her. Hope grabbed. It, trying not to let her disappointment show. It wasn't the first time this year that he'd been late on a project or missing homework. She glanced over the few lines he'd written. The wind rushes through the trees and the grass. The sky fades to amber, then to cold black. What's going on, Ethan? I gave you guys plenty of time to catch up on reading the sonnets I assigned and two extra days to write this. I know you can do it. These first two lines are great. Ethan's shoulders slumped. I'm sorry. Coach wants me to bulk up. I'm in the weight room every night after school. I tried to stay up last night and finish. Hope took a closer look at her student. Ethan had dark circles under his eyes. He didn't look like he'd been getting enough sleep. Tell you what, she said. I'm going to give you an extension on this. How does Friday before class sound? She handed the sheet of paper back to him. Ethan's face lit up as he walked to his seat. Hope made a mental note to keep an eye on him and to talk to Michael about all that extra practice. Let's run this drill one more time, Michael yelled across the field. Hope watched ten players run back to the starting point. At the coach's whistle, they ran through a pattern of cones, switching steps and direction as they passed each one. Better but still not fast enough. Thomas, watch your turn. You're slow on the back panel. He walked up to his players, patting each of them on the shoulder. Good work. Get some water and rest up. He turned, ready to yell at the next group of players when he caught her eye. Pat, can you take over for a minute? Michael asked before jogging over to the fence where Hope stood. Good practice? Although he looked surprised to see her on the field, she asked, Do you have a minute to talk? He nodded and walked through the gate. Let's sit in the stands. He gestured for her to walk ahead of him and pick a seat. What's up? he asked. Something wrong? You look serious. It's about one of your players. Ethan Baxter. Good kid. Michael looked over to the field where Ethan practiced with some of his teammates. Great work ethic. He's got a shot at a scholarship if he steps it up this year. He mentioned extra training and putting on muscle? Hope followed his gaze to the field. You're working him pretty hard. No pain, no gain, Michael shrugged. He's been keeping up with the program and Principal Fowler is getting him some help in math if that's what this is about. It's not. He's in my English class. He's barely able to keep his eyes open and he keeps falling behind on assignments. She turned to look at him, hoping to impress how important this was. He's a smart kid, but if he's not careful, he'll start flunking classes. I'll talk to him, Michael murmured. Make sure he works harder and gets his stuff turned in on time. I'm not sure that's the solution, Hope said softly. She put her hand on his arm. It was hot from the sun, and the dark hairs on it made the inside of her hand prickle. 
At least she thought that might be what caused the sensation running up her arm. He's spending too much time in the gym and not enough sleeping. Have you noticed how exhausted he's looked this week? Michael sat quietly for a moment, looking down at her hand. He dozed off in geography yesterday, he admitted. I'd hate to have him lose out on a scholarship to a good school though. He's so close. Hope could see that Michael cared. Can I ask you something? He looked up at her. Of course. Let's say he plays for a college team and keeps working on his game. She paused for a moment, trying to figure out how to best ask this question. Do you think he has a shot at going pro? Michael thought for a moment, watching Ethan practice out on the field. Maybe. He sounded doubtful. He'll struggle in college if he doesn't keep up with his schoolwork now. That's if he ends up graduating. Maybe he's pushing too hard. Michael looked at her. Maybe I've been pushing him too hard. I'll talk to Ethan. Make him slow down, make time for his schoolwork. That would be great. Maybe we can both help him catch up. I'm sure math isn't the only thing he could use a little extra help in. Hope was glad that Michael got the point she'd been trying to make. She had a feeling Principal Fowler put a lot of pressure on him to get the team in shape. It was Michael's first year as a teacher and a coach. He was trying to prove himself. She couldn't blame him for going a little too far, as long as it didn't hurt any of the students in the long run. Sounds like a plan. He rose and walked back on the field, taking over practice. Hope stayed and watched. She had to admit, he was a good football coach. Better than she'd expected. He'd grown as a person over the past five years. There were hints of the boy she used to love, but that boy had grown into a strong, responsible man, a leader, and with a little help, a great educator. Chapter 4 Miss Patton, Jeremy, one of the defensive ends, ran across the school campus. I made a B on my history paper. He grinned from ear to ear. I'm going to pass that class. Thanks to your help. He stopped in front of her and held the paper out to her. Hope grabbed it and skimmed over the notes Mr. Smith had left. Well done. She returned his big smile with one of her own. The past few weeks had been crazy busy. With Michael's help, she'd been tutoring the players on the football team who needed a little extra help. It turned out, Ethan wasn't the only one struggling to balance schoolwork and football practice. Everyone on the coaching staff worked together to make sure there was plenty of time to catch up on homework, projects, and studying for tests. My grandma wants you to come over for dinner Monday, after practice. You and Coach Erickson. She's making fried chicken. He had a pleading look in his eyes that made it almost impossible to say no. She said not to take no for an answer. He bent down, whispering conspiratorially, between you and me, you'd better come. She'll pester you until the end of days if you don't. Hope laughed. Dinner at your house sounds great. Tell your grandmother I'd be honored to join you Monday. Jeremy nodded his thanks, shoved the history report in his back pocket and walked off. Hope returned to her classroom, sighing as she sat down to grade another stack of papers. The only downside to spending most of her afternoons on the football field and in the weight room, helping the players study, was that she was continually behind on grading. You look like you could use this, Michael said, strolling into her room with a large cup of coffee. Two sugars and a splash of cream. You are a lifesaver. Hope took a cautious sip and sighed. It was perfect. Hot and sweet. Between the sugar and caffeine, she may actually make it through the rest of the day. We have a dinner invitation Monday night, Michael said, leaning against one of the desks in the front row. Jeremy's grandmother, she asked. Michael nodded. I told him I'd be there. I'm looking forward to the fried chicken. From what I hear, it's legendary. She leaned back in her chair, ready to relax for a few minutes and enjoy the coffee. Have you heard anything about how Ethan's doing in his classes? He's catching up in English. Everything I've heard so far has been positive. Principal Fowler is over the moon. 
They're keeping their grades up and if we win Friday night's game, we make it to the district finals. He grinned. I made sure you get credit for the academic part. Huh. I'm sure all he's interested in are the football scores. He loves having you on staff. She grinned back at him. His joy was contagious. Are you ready for the big game? Georgetown is a tough opponent this year. Hope stopped in her track somehow, she'd become an expert on high school football in the past two months. Before Michael's return, she wasn't sure she knew Georgetown had a football team, let alone how well they did or didn't do. She'd barely known when their own team won. As ready as they can be. You're coming to the game, right? For moral support. I think it would mean a lot to the guys. He pushed off from the desk he'd been half-leaning, half-sitting on. He looked right at her, his face serious now. The boyish grin from earlier was gone. To me too. Hope nodded. I'll be there. She watched him walk out of her room. Not for the first time, she thought about how good the man looked in jeans and a plain t-shirt. It was an exciting game. Hope held her breath. The score was 21-24, with Georgetown in the lead. With less than a minute left in the game, Palmer needed a touchdown. They'd worked their way down the field to the 50-yard line. Colin, the Palmer high quarterback, threw the ball down the field. Yes. Michael cheered over the noise of the crowd. Everyone in the stands was on their feet. The throw was good. Henri, one of the running backs, caught it and took off. Hope pushed her way through the throng of people toward the fence. Henri was pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. When Hope made it to the fence, she could see Michael on the sideline. He yelled at his players, giving direction and encouragement. The offense took their places at the line of scrimmage. Ethan lined up across from a guy who looked like he had at least 50 pounds on him. No wonder Michael wanted him to bulk up and put on weight. She kept her eye on him when the play started. Ethan held his own and opened up a gap for Colin. The senior quarterback took full advantage of it and took off. He crossed the 10-yard line. His team blocked for him as best they could, but Georgetown was a strong team. He had to cut to the right to get around a defensive player. The guy got a hand on him, but somehow Colin stayed upright. He kept running. Just a few more yards. Touchdown. The stadium announcer screamed into the microphone. It was barely audible over the whoops and cheers from the crowd. That was it. They'd won. Hope couldn't believe it. They'd done it. Miss Patton. Stephen, one of the defense players came running up to the gate in the fence. Come on in. Before Hope could stop him, he opened the gate. The people behind her pushed her through and rushed the field. If Stephen hadn't grabbed her arm and pulled her to the side, she would have ended up on the ground. Sorry, he said before pulling her over to the sidelines where the team was gathered. The players high-fived her and grabbed her into hugs. It was as exciting as it was unnerving. These guys were big in the classroom, but wearing pads and helmets, they seemed much larger. You're here. Michael picked her up and spun her around. We did it. We won. Did you see that last pass? And then the run? Hope grinned. She couldn't remember seeing Michael this proud of his team. I think you're more excited about this than your last game at Clemson. She'd been there for that game as well, watching from the stands as Michael caught three touchdowns in the NCAA finals. They'd been one touchdown away from making it to the national championship game. He'd been great. Impressive. NFL scouts paid attention, and there'd been talk about him making it as a first-round draft pick. Watch out, Michael shoved her out of the way before the guys dumped a barrel full of sports drink and ice on him. She caught some of the backsplash, but he'd saved her from the worst of it. Michael, on the other hand, was drenched, pushing dripping wet hair out of his face. How about dinner? I'm starving, Michael said. He had showered in the locker room and changed into dry clothes. 
Hope could tell he was still wound up from the intense game and the win. He basically vibrated as he walked next to her. They were on their way to her car in the back parking lot of the school. He'd insisted on walking her all the way to her spot in the back. Sure. There's still time to grab a burger at Mary's. She'll be open for another 30 minutes. It had become their regular hangout after late practices and tutoring sessions when they were both too tired to cook. I have a better idea, he said, holding out his hand. Keys? Hope dug around her purse, found the bundle of keys, and handed them to him. She was curious about what he had in mind. Michael unlocked the car and held the passenger door open for her. By the time she was settled in and had her seatbelt buckled, he was in the driver's seat, cranking up her old Honda Accord. Where are we going? she asked. Michael shook his head, heading out of the school parking lot. Twenty minutes later, they sat out on the beach on top of an old blanket she kept in the trunk, a box of bacon and olive pizza in front of them. I can't believe you remembered, Hope said, grabbing another slice. How could I forget? You're the only person I know who orders bacon and green olives. He took a big bite himself. It's not nearly as bad as I remembered. Hope poked him in the side. It earned her another grin. His eyes smoldered, and he started to pull her closer. Hope panicked. She took another bite of her pizza, trying to think of something to say. Anything to get him talking. What's next? Now that you've won the district game? We go to the regionals. He shrugged. I'm not sure how far we'll make it, but it doesn't matter. I still can't believe we pulled this off. He laid back, stretching out on the blanket. I guess it gives you something to work on for next season. Grow the team, win regionals. Is that the plan? Hope held her breath. Michael hadn't said anything yet about the coming school year and the next football season. She assumed they'd renew his contract, and while teaching wasn't his favorite, he was getting better. And he loved coaching his guys. Hope found herself hoping he would stick around. And not just for his kids. Something like that. He grew quiet. Hope closed the empty pizza box and tossed it in the sand beside them. She laid down and put her head on his shoulder, feeling his chest rise and fall. He put his arm around her and pulled her closer. It felt nice. Familiar. They'd spent many an evening like this. First at the beach as teenagers, and later at Clemson on the football field. They'd snuck in hours after the game, Michael still too wound up from their latest win. They'd talk until sunrise, before sneaking back into their respective dorms. Hope sighed. Part of her missed those days. It made her realize how lonely she'd been the past five years. Were you seeing anyone? she asked. You know. While well, you played for the Panthers. It would have been easy to Google or follow him on social media. But she hadn't. She didn't want to see who had replaced her. I've dated here and there, but nothing serious, Michael said. Nothing ever felt right. How about you? Hope nodded. Same here. I went out with a few guys when I first started teaching. Nothing serious. They both grew quiet. Hope was tempted to tell him that she couldn't get him out of her head. Every guy she'd gone out with, she'd compared to Michael and they'd all fallen short. Now he was back, but was it for good? It's getting late, Michael finally said. He got up and held out a hand for her. They walked off the beach hand in hand, and Hope tried to decide if she wanted him to kiss her goodnight when they got back to the school parking lot and his truck. Chapter 5 Do you remember our last winter formal? Michael asked. He was glad Hope was chaperoning the dance with him. He looked around the familiar gym, turned into a winter wonderland. There were snow-covered mountain backdrops, icicle lights, and even a frozen lake, made from light blue construction paper and plastic foil. A bench surrounded by fake snow was placed in front of it for pictures. The dance committee had outdone themselves, with a little help from the drama kids. I do, Hope said. She looked amazing in a flowy white dress. 
It had long sleeves and came down well below her knees. But the way the fabric hugged her luscious curves. He had to swallow hard and stick his hands in his pockets to avoid the temptation of pulling her into his arms. I made you dance the entire night. Hope looked up at him with her big baby blue eyes. That look transported him back nine years. He was a high school senior again who couldn't quite believe he was headed to Clemson to play ball. He was the guy who was dating the best-looking girl in their class. Some of his friends didn't agree, but what did they know? Hope was perfect, and she was his. She was kind and compassionate, and he loved the way her soft curves felt in his arms. They had danced most of the night at their winter formal. He smiled. I didn't mind one bit. She looked longingly to the dance floor where the kids they taught every day moved to the music, and he knew she'd love the surprise he had in store for her. Hey, Coach, Ethan said, walking up beside him. You've got experience with girls and stuff, right? Michael coughed. H-M-M-M-M. What's up? There's this girl I've had my eye on. Elizabeth. She's on the cheerleading squad. Ethan nodded his head toward a corner of the gym where a group of girls in floor-length gowns were hanging out. I want to ask her to dance. Go up and ask her. Michael smiled at his player encouragingly. He was surprised Ethan had a confidence problem. He wasn't usually the shy or quiet type. I don't know what to say. Help me out here. Ethan turned his head and looked at him expectantly. Okay, here's what you do. He stepped closer and lowered his head, giving Ethan one of his favorite pickup lines to try. Hope laughed. Don't do that, Ethan. Michael raised his head, not realizing she'd overheard. She stared right up at him, her eyes blazing. That is so bad. Please tell me you haven't tried that line. She giggled before composing herself. Here's what you do instead. Trust me, I'm a girl. I know about this. Walk up to her, look her straight in the eye, and say, may I have this dance? She held her hand out to him to illustrate what he should do. That sounds kinda formal. Ethan raised his eyebrows. That's the whole point. You want to make a good impression. But here's the thing. You've got to make sure it comes off confident. Like you're 100% sure you know what you're doing. There's nothing more attractive than competence in a guy. Think you can do that? She shot Ethan a challenging look. The tips of his ears turned red, but Ethan nodded. He took off and Michael watched him cross the gym and walk up to the group of girls. Yes, it worked. Hope was ready to jump up and down and cheer for Ethan. Thankfully, she didn't. He reached over and squeezed her hand in silent congratulations. Michael tried to keep a straight face, but couldn't help grinning when he saw Ethan and Elizabeth sway to the soft, slow song. Then, he noticed Hope swaying to the music beside him and all thoughts of the kids on the dance floor fled his mind. Hope hid a yawn behind her slender hand. It was getting late, and they'd been there for hours beforehand helping the dance committee set up. After a full day teaching, with only a brief rest to eat a few slices of pizza the PTO had kindly provided, it was no wonder she was worn out. He felt it, too, but at least he wasn't wearing heels. Why don't we get you a chair so you can rest for a bit? He walked over to the back wall and returned with one of the folding chairs scattered around the perimeter of the gym. Here. Sit down. He held the chair out for her. Thanks. Hope took a seat and slipped her shoes off. He'd been right, her feet must be killing her. She had them tucked under the chair and was rubbing the soles of her feet together. Put them on the floor and raise your knees so you're on the ball of your feet, he suggested. Stretch your toes out and push down. It'll stretch your arches. A soft groan left her lips. That feels amazing. She looked up, gratitude pouring out of her eyes. How did you know? My PT guy showed me that stretch, Michael shrugged. Hope giggled. I didn't realize they made you wear heels. Part of practice or just for formal events? Wait. 
Michael put a hand on Hope's arm as she reached for her purse and jacket. I have a surprise for you. She let go of her purse and turned around to look at him. I love surprises. She looked better than she had a couple of hours ago when he'd made her sit down and brought her a Mountain Dew to drink. The caffeine and sugar had done their job, and she'd made it through the end of the dance and the cleanup they'd started on. The maintenance crew would come in early and take care of the rest. The main floor was cleared and they'd folded and stacked the chairs. Most of the decorations were gone, but the disco ball still hung from the ceiling, the lights were still on, and he'd paid the sound guy extra to stick around for a little while longer. He nodded in his direction. The lights dimmed and their song, the one they'd danced to at prom their senior year, came on. A soft spotlight lit the center of the dance floor, some of it sparkling in the gently rotating disco ball. The few other teachers were quietly leaving. It was just them and the DJ in the gym. Our song. Hope glanced up at him. You did this? He nodded and held his hand out to her. She grabbed it. He loved the way it felt to have his large hand wrap around hers, so fragile and warm. He never wanted to let go. He pulled her close and walked out to the center of the gym with her. He pulled their hands to his chest, close to his heart. His other hand rested at the small of her back, keeping her close. She fit perfectly. They swayed to the music, his heart beating in rhythm with hers. He barely made out the contented sigh she released when she rested her head on his shoulder. The scent from her peach blossom shampoo wafted up to his nose. So familiar. It made his heart ache. He wanted her back in his life. He wanted to talk about their future together. About the house they would build and the children they'd have together one day. He wanted everything he'd lost when he chose the NFL over her five years ago. This is magical, Hope said. She smiled so sweetly up at him, he couldn't help himself. Michael lowered his head and brushed his lips across hers. He went slowly, carefully, giving her plenty of time to decide if this was something she wanted as much as he did. He felt her shake in his arms, his own heart pounding in his ears. It was so loud, the music faded into the background. He forgot about everything but her as he captured her lips with his for a real kiss. The music had stopped when they finally broke apart. Hope reached up and ran her fingers through his hair. It sent shivers up his back. He pulled her closer, not wanting the moment to end. I'm glad you came back, she whispered. I am too, he said before reluctantly stepping back. He kissed her forehead before turning to wave his thanks to the DJ. I'll walk you to your car. His voice sounded rough. He grabbed her hand, walking toward the door. Letting go of her was the last thing he wanted to do. Chapter 6 I haven't seen much of you lately, Miss Dora said, pouring a cup of coffee. I'm glad we're finally getting a chance to catch up. Here, have a slice of black forest cake. I'm working on a new recipe for the Valentine's Bake Sale. It's been a crazy couple of weeks. Hope added two spoons of sugar to her coffee and pulled the plate with the slice of cake closer. It smelled amazing. Rich, dark chocolate, sweet cherry filling, a hint of vanilla and something else she couldn't place. She sniffed, carefully. It's called Koish. It's a strong cherry liquor. I had to special order it for the cake. The recipe called for it. I'm not sure how the ladies at church will feel about it, but I kind of like it. Miss Doris's steel-gray eyes lit up. I may have had a nip of it. It's not for the faint of heart on its own. Hope put her fork in the cake and took a careful bite. It was rich, creamy, complex, and to her surprise, not super sweet. A perfect mixture of tart cherries, sweet cream, and dark chocolate. This is amazing. I wouldn't change a thing. The cake looked great, too, with its dark chocolate layers and cherry filling. The entire cake was covered in whipped cream and topped with cherries and dark chocolate shavings. I think it's going to be a huge hit. You may want to make more than one. Thank you, dear. I think it looks romantic too. I wonder if I could make a couple of smaller cakes for the young couples out there. 
like you and Michael. Miss Doris smiled at her expectantly. Hope smiled back, unable to hide the happiness she'd been feeling since the winter formal. I would definitely buy one. Cupcakes would be fun too. Stop changing the subject. Miss Doris put a bite of cake in her mouth and pointed her empty fork at Hope. Hope got the point. I am doing well. We're doing well. It's nice to have him back. We're taking it slow after everything that happened last time. Hope trailed off, her eyes drawn to the spot on the beach, just outside Miss Doris's living room window where she'd broken up with Michael all those years ago. She'd run into the house and cried for hours in her old friend's arms. She shook her head, returning to the present. We've been spending a lot of time together. Especially now that football season is over. Did I tell you that he took me out to Brook Green Gardens for their Night of a Thousand Candles event? She asked. Miss Doris shook her head and took a sip of coffee. I haven't been in years. How was it? Very romantic, Hope grinned. We went one of the last weekends before Christmas. It was nice and cold and it felt very festive. We sipped hot chocolate and strolled through the gardens. They don't joke when they say a thousand candles. And that's in addition to all the lights on the trees and buildings. It had been magical. Almost as magical as their dance in the gym. That was one memory she would keep private. It was too precious to share, even with as good a friend as Miss Doris. Did you two have a nice Christmas? I'm sure you were both ready for a break from classes. We were. Michael is still getting used to teaching, and those lesson plans are taking a lot longer than he'd like. Hope had been helping him and had done her best to ensure he stayed on top of grading tests and papers. It was nice to have two weeks off together. We spent Christmas Day with his family. How are they taking the news? And what about your folks? I called my mom and dad right before Christmas. They are happy for us. Hope's parents had moved away from the island last year. Michael's family welcomed me with open arms. It was as if I'd never left. His mom is convinced and the reason he retired and came back. I don't think she's wrong. Miss Doris smiled a secret little smile. I've been watching that boy. Then and now. He is still as smitten with you as he was then. I wish I was that sure, Hope said. Don't get me wrong. It's been wonderful. I just have a hard time believing he's here for good. Time will show you that he's serious about you too. Miss Doris smiled at her and took the last bite of her cake. Hope hoped she was right. What do you mean he's gone to Houston? Hope stood across from Principal Fowler in the hallway, her entire world crashing down in the middle of the school day. Michael didn't tell you? He has an offer to play for a year in Houston. He took a couple of days off to go talk to them and take a look at their facilities. We hate to see him go after what he's done with the football team this year, but who am I to stand in the way of Palmer Island's favorite son? Hope shook her head, trying hard to process what the man was saying. This couldn't be right. Surely, Michael would have told her. No, not just told her. He would have talked to her about this, before even considering it. Wouldn't he? Sure, he'd seemed a little distant and preoccupied the past few days, but she figured it was because he'd gotten behind on grading. Miss Patton? Yes. He'd crept into Hope's cheeks when she realized she'd been so lost in her thoughts she'd missed something her boss had said. I asked how your class enjoyed the trip to the local theater to watch the play. What was it? Hamlet? Macbeth. They had a wonderful time. It really brought the words alive for them. Hope smiled. Her students had enjoyed the field trip. She and Michael had taken her class to the old movie theater off Main Street. The local theater troupe was performing the Shakespearean play for a few weeks. Good. I'm glad to hear it. If you talk to Michael, tell him we're all pulling for him. Wouldn't it be something if he went back to play another couple of years? Mr. Fowler turned and walked away. 
Hope was left wondering who these people, those who were all pulling for her boyfriend, were. Had he told everyone but her? Hope walked back into her classroom in a daze. She picked up her phone. No new messages from Michael. He hadn't even bothered telling her he wouldn't be at school today. The facilities are impressive, Michael said, looking around the weight room before stepping out into the hallway. Coach Jones walked beside them as they toured the Houston Stars training facilities. That's what I thought. Bit of an upgrade from what we had. I can't believe you called me. I'm retired, teaching high school. I had to at least ask. If you don't want to come back and play for another season or two, I get it. All I'm saying is, I think you've got it in you, and you're exactly what this team needs. You and Carter Bryce would work well together. Did you get a chance to meet him yet? Michael nodded. We had lunch. Nice guy. He liked the quarterback. He seemed down-to-earth and hard-working, unlike some of the others he'd worked with in the past. Some had let their star player status get to their head. Others plain didn't know how to get in the ball fast enough. Carter's style would match well with his. If he decided to come back. I'm not going to ask you to make a decision on the spot, but I think we know each other well enough for you to tell me what you're thinking. Coach Jones sat down on one of the benches in the locker room. Michael glanced up before taking a seat beside him. The coach had stopped in front of the number 88 locker. Michael's old number. He grinned. Trying to give me a hint here, coach, he asked. Coach Jones shrugged. Hopeful wishing. Didn't have them put your name on it. Thought about it, though. To answer your question, I don't know. Michael sat down across from his old coach. I retired because I didn't want to end up crippled. My shoulder isn't what it used to be, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not in the same shape I was nine months ago. Coach Jones nodded. A desk job will do that. It's early though. We have time to whip you back into shape before spring training starts. The idea didn't sound as appealing as it would have a year or two ago. Football had been his life for as long as he could remember. His mom joked that he was born with a ball in his hand and that he'd played with a soft little football before he could walk. Even now, his team at Palmer High took up a good part of his day and his mind. But coaching a group of high school students was very different from the time and dedication it took to play professionally. I'm not sure that's what I want to do. A part of Michael felt bad to even say it out loud. Where had his competitive spirit gone, his drive? Not even for a $6 million three-year contract? It was the first mention of compensation the coach had made. It's tempting, Michael admitted. Between tax payments, the fees his agent took, and some unfortunate investments, he hadn't ended up with a lot of cash by the time he retired. He wasn't without means, and most people would consider his savings a very nice nest egg, but he'd felt compelled to look for a job right away. Not that teaching paid well. But it covered his rent, his groceries, and the insurance was decent. But not really motivating you to come back. Anything that would? Michael thought for a moment. There were things he missed about his old life. The rush, the team spirit, the energy from a stadium full of fans rooting for you. But at the end of the day, it had left him empty and alone. All that was different back home on Palmer Island. People cared for him, and not because of what he could do with an inflated piece of leather. And there was hope. There, that's your motivation. Coach Jones studied him. What were you thinking about? Michael cleared his throat. A girl, back home. He was afraid to look up at the coach. Ah! He rose and held a hand out to Michael. Let's go grab a beer and you can tell me all about her. There isn't much to tell. We were high school sweethearts. We left for college together, and by the time I was getting ready to be drafted, I proposed. Michael took a sip of his beer. The bar down the road from the training facility was bright and clean. Almost sterile. Huge screens hung on the walls, sports news and various games playing. Something different on every screen. 
It gave him a headache and made him miss their local watering hole on Palmer Island. And Hope's living room with the small 32-inch TV that they'd watched their old college team's games on. How long were you guys married? Coach asked. I don't remember meeting her. We didn't. She turned me down. Because of playing professionally. She didn't think she could deal with it. The media, the travel, the crazy schedule. In hindsight, he didn't blame her. There was a lot he didn't miss about his life as a professional football player. I'm sorry. That couldn't have been easy. Coach Jones looked at him over his own beer. Want some food? The wings are decent. Michael shook his head. He wasn't hungry. And if he actually considered coming back, he had to watch his diet. And he should probably stop drinking beer. He set his down. She's back in your life? The girl you proposed to? She is. We've been spending a lot of time together. How did she take the news of this offer? Coach asked. She doesn't know. Michael wasn't sure why he hadn't told her. Maybe because he knew she wouldn't approve. Probably because he was afraid of losing her again. You're kidding. Michael looked up at those words. Coach Jones looked concerned. Chapter 7 Don't read too much into it, Miss Doris advised later that afternoon. He probably just forgot to mention it. My Humphrey would forget to tell me things all the time. One time, we were supposed to have dinner at Pastor Mason's house. He'd made the arrangements and not only did he forget to tell me about it, he forgot about it completely. Why don't you wait until you two see each other and talk about this in person? Hope nodded. Miss Doris had a point. Her head shot up at a knock on the screen door. Her front door was wide open, letting the ocean breeze flow through the house on this surprisingly warm winter day. The screen door, on the other hand, was latched from the inside. Hope? Are you home? She'd recognize that voice anywhere. Despite the anger and disappointment of the past day, her heart beat faster. Aren't you going to get that? Hope stood frozen in place until Miss Doris's words woke her out of her stupor. Of course. Hope walked through the living room toward the front door. Coming, she called. She saw him before she reached the door. Michael stood there, a big smile on his face and a huge bouquet of winter flowers in his arms. Her hand shook as she unhooked the screen. Hi, he said before stepping into the house. These are for you. Thanks. Hope didn't take the flowers. Instead, she turned around and walked into the kitchen. She pulled a large glass vase out of one of the cabinets and filled it with water. What are they for, she asked before setting the vase down on the kitchen table. An apology. Michael put the bouquet on the table and turned to face her. Look. I'd better be going, Miss Doris called from the doorway. It was good catching up with you, Hope. Don't forget what I told you. The screen door fell closed behind her neighbor and friend. What did she tell you? Michael looking at her with those hazel eyes of his. Then he waited. Hmm. Hope hesitated for a moment. She told me not to read too much into the fact that you were gone and I had to hear from Principal Fowler that you were in Houston to talk to a team. Is that true? Hope put her hands in the pockets of her jeans. It is. I flew out there and just got back. My old offensive coach from Charlotte called me. He's the new head coach of the Houston Stars. And he wants you to come back and play for him? Hope tried hard to keep her voice neutral keeping her eyes on the flowers that still lay on the table next to the vase. She picked them up, removed the paper, and started arranging them, stepping away to grab a knife to cut the ends. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Michael's gaze follow the knife as she cut the ends of the stems of the roses that were part of the arrangement. It must have cost a small fortune with its mix of exotic flowers, various greens, and beautiful glassblown ornaments on long metal stems. He does, he said, his voice sounding a little hesitant. They offered me a three-year contract. He turned around and strode over to the window. 
It looked out over her tiny fenced in backyard. Four six million dollars. Hope gasped. She knew NFL football players were paid well, but hearing an actual figure from someone she knew, someone she considered building a life with was something else entirely. What did you tell them? She held her breath. I told them I needed to talk to you. He turned and walked towards her, vulnerability plainly written on his face. He held his hands out to his sides, palms facing her. I'm sorry, Hope. I never should have kept you out of the loop. I shouldn't have gone out there without you. He pulled her into a tight hug, crushing her to his chest. Please forgive me. I couldn't stand losing you again. Hope couldn't breathe. She couldn't believe what he'd said. She needed a moment to process. She put her arms around his waist and hung on. They both stood there, breathing together, their heartbeats sinking. It gave Hope time to think. To think about what she wanted. A life with Michael, yes. So far, she'd always assumed that life would be here on Palmer Island, both of them working at the high school together. But that was her dream. It wasn't his. It hadn't been five years ago and he wouldn't have flown out to Houston unless it was something he still wanted. She took a deep breath and stepped back. Why don't we go sit in the living room and talk? He nodded and followed her wordlessly. She sat down on the couch and motioned for him to sit next to her. When he did, she grabbed his hand and turned to face him. Of course I forgive you, Michael. I wish you'd told me when this opportunity came up, but it's not like we're married. Not yet. He gave her one of those cute smirks that made her insides melt a little bit. But we're dating, considering building a life together. This isn't a decision I should make alone. It affects you as much as it does me. He looked down at their intertwined hands and squeezed. You more than me. If we go to Houston, you'd have to quit your job, leave the school. He looked around, leave this house. It's a lot to ask. It is. She nodded, following his gaze around the cute little beach house that had been her home for the past three years. She'd worked hard and put every penny away to be able to afford it. It wouldn't be easy to give it up. But sometimes, sacrifices were required for the stuff that was truly important. And Michael's happiness was that important to her. I don't want to make the same mistake I did five years ago. I'll call Coach Jones in the morning. And you will tell him that we'll be there. Do you think they would mind if we finished out the school year? Or do they need you out there right away? I'd hate to leave my students hanging. Some of them need this class to graduate. Hope's heart beat a mile a minute, but deep down she knew it was the right thing. It's what she wanted. He stared at her, his mouth open. What? His mouth closed. What are you talking about? I'm talking about when we'll be moving to Houston. I don't want to repeat the mistake we made five years ago either. I love you, and if Houston is where you want to go, then that's that. She let go of his hand and stood, too wound up to sit still any longer. It's not going to be easy, and I'm sure I'll need some help with all the media stuff. She paced from one end of the living room to the other. Do you think they'll expect me to be there for the games? I'm not sure I'd like that. I'd be worried about you, and the last thing I want is a camera in my face when you're down on the field. Michael rose and intercepted her path. You've given this a lot of thought. He sounded surprised. Hope nodded. Of course. Coach Rollins and his wife sat me down before we left Clemson. They did their best to prepare me for what it would mean to be an NFL player's wife. I didn't think I could handle it then, but I can do it now. She became aware that she was turning into a real live bobblehead. If she kept nodding, she'd convince herself that she could handle being away from home, dealing with the media, and everything else that came with being the wife of a professional athlete. That explains it. Explains what? Why you declined my proposal. Their talk must have scared the wits out of you. She swallowed. It did. It still scares you, doesn't it? Hope nodded. I wish you'd talked to me about it. 
I don't think it's as bad as you think. He must have noticed the doubt in her eyes. At least not the media stuff. Many players' wives keep a pretty low profile. No one would recognize them on the street. And no, they wouldn't expect you to come to the stadium. He gave her a sad little smile. Though I wouldn't mind having you there once or twice. To show off, a little. That's good. She was still nodding and made herself stop. I'd like to keep a low profile, if you don't mind. Of course. It would still mean we'd move to Houston. And it would take a lot of work for me to get back into playing shape. You'd spend a lot of time by yourself. She couldn't believe it. He looked like he was in incredible shape, he worked out with his kids every week, even during the off-season. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Maybe I can teach out there. You would do that? Give up everything here to come with me? Hope nodded. I would. I told you, I don't want to repeat the past either. I love you, Michael, and I want you to be happy. He pulled her close and kissed her with a fierceness that took her breath away. It was demanding and protective and showed her what he didn't say. I love you too, he finally mumbled breathlessly. Promise me you won't get hurt, she said a little while later when they were snuggled up on the couch. I can't promise you that. He pulled her closer. There's too much outside of my control on the field. When I hurt my shoulder, it wasn't anything I could have avoided. Trust me, I've been over the tapes. I've replayed everything in my head. There's nothing I could have done differently. But you can play with it? And you'll try to be careful? She kept telling herself that it would be only for a few years. She could do this, worry about him for three years, and then build the rest of their lives together. I could. He paused before reaching over and cupping her face with his hands. But I won't. Going back to football isn't the right decision for us. Our life and our future are here. On the island. Are you sure? Hope held her breath. I'm sure. I didn't realize until you told me you were willing to go with me that it isn't something I need or want to do anymore. I'm done with football. Hope couldn't believe what she was hearing. Well, not done done. I'll still coach and you better plan on spending every Sunday from August to January watching the games. I should warn you. I'm a terrible armchair coach. There will be lots of yelling, and I'll be convinced I can do much better than the players on the field. Hope smiled. She could see it. The two of them watching the games on TV surrounded by family and friends. Or sitting in the stands. It was an easy sacrifice to make. Besides, the weather was usually bad all through the fall anyway. It's a deal. I'll deal with any high school, college, or professional football you want to throw at me. And I hope you'll keep coaching for a long time. Her face grew more serious. You're a good coach, Michael. You're making a real difference with the guys on your team. Look at Ethan. He barked out a laugh. That was all you. But you're right, I would like to keep coaching. And maybe one day, you could coach our kids. The words slipped out before she could think about them. She watched his face carefully. I'd like that, he said, his voice sounding husky. But I think we should get engaged and married first, if you don't mind. Epilogue Five months later This feels a little deja vu, Hope said, beaming up at Michael. They were, once again, in the school gym chaperoning together. This time, the event was the annual senior prom. The decorations were different, and there was a band instead of a DJ. The girls' dresses were lighter and airier, but aside from that, it felt very much like the winter formal. Had it really been only six months since they'd gotten back together? Yeah, didn't we just do this yesterday? Michael asked, his gaze roaming the dance floor, keeping an eye out for couples getting a little too close at a school event. She looked at him, grinning down at her. One thing was different. He'd worn khakis and a dress shirt for the winter formal. For the prom though, he'd gone all out and rented a tux. 
or maybe he owned one? Professional football players went to enough awards shows and charity events that it was entirely possible that it was his. She wondered what that was about. Hope didn't have to wait long. May I have this dance? Michael asked, before grabbing her hand and pulling her out onto the dance floor before she had a chance to reply. Was he waving at Principal Fowler? Hope stumbled behind him until he slowed down enough to allow her to catch up. Sorry, he mumbled before making his way to the middle of the dance floor. The students around them parted, making space in the center of the gym. Then the music changed. Hope recognized the song. It was their song, Find Your Love, by Drake. Hope's heart raced faster, and it wasn't just the music. Michael pulled her close and started dancing. Hope couldn't help herself. She moved right along with him, forgetting everything, but his handsome face, the way he moved, and how his arms felt around her hips. After a minute, the music faded and Principal Fowler walked up with a microphone. Michael grabbed it, nodding his thanks. Hope realized that the entire senior class stood in a large circle around them, and a spotlight pointed right at them. Michael took a step back from her. I thought about doing this out on the beach, but I figured we could both use a complete do-over. Then he got down on one knee. Hope gasped. Could this really be happening? Here? Tonight? Hope Patton, I have loved you since the day I first saw you on the football field, wearing the Palmer High uniform. Big cheers went up from the students around them. Hope's hand flew to her chest. She remembered that day like it was yesterday. That had been the day she realized there could be more than friendship between them. Less than a week later, he had asked her out. And that had been that. I know we took different paths there for a little while. He looked right into her eyes and gave an almost perceptible shrug. I can't tell you how happy I am that those paths crossed again. Right down the hall in your classroom. Hope heard a few whoops from her English students. She turned and smiled at them. When he started to talk again, she turned to look at the man she loved. I'm here, tonight, hoping you will agree to keep those paths side by side, as we build a life together. His hand went to the pocket of his jacket and he pulled a small velvet-covered box from it. Michael put the microphone down on the gym floor with a clank. Then he held the box up to her and opened it. When he picked the mic back up, she could see his hand shaking. Taking a deep breath he continued. Hope, will you marry me? Yes. She barely got the one word out before the entire gym broke into a round of applause, cheers, and screams. Hope held her hand out to Michael, and he slipped a huge diamond ring on her finger before rising to hug her. People clapped them on the back, and before long, they were engulfed in a huge group hug. Hope could barely make out the words Michael all, but screamed into her ear. I'm glad you finally said yes. And so was she. The End This has been Meet Me on the Beach. Written by Suzanne Ash. Copyright 2020 by Suzanne Ash. Production Copyright 2022 by Suzanne Ash. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe if you want me to put more of my books on YouTube. Visit my website at www.suzanneash.com for more of my books or find me on Amazon.